Welcome, light workers. <laughs> if you are drawn to this reading, you are ready to level up. You're like, your mission, your journey is about to really take a huge leap. And for that reason, you need to hear a little bit of guidance so that you don't feel overwhelmed or confused or lost. Um, for those of you who aren't clear on what a light worker is, if you were drawn here, that is you. A light worker is someone whose sole purpose in this lifetime is to come to earth or whatever realm you're born into to shed light in a way that heals, that elevates, that inspires, that motivates. It could be any of those or it could be all of those. You can be here to shed light without even knowing you're doing it just by being you. A light worker is an energy shifter, an energy activator. A light worker is a servant for source, for the most high. And they come here with the sole mission to help uplift humanity. And as you know, if you've been paying attention to anything that's been going on, and hopefully light workers, you haven't been so much because it can affect your vibration. It can cause overwhelm and um, unnecessary stress. But you know that the world needs you badly right now. So I'm going to start by giving you a look at October by doing a week by week energy read. I'm not going to do full spreads. We're going to take a look at the vibe and I'm going to use the Sufi Tarot. And then I'm going to use the Angel and Aura's Oracle to let you know exactly either what the lesson or blessing is going to be during that week or the energy or colors you need to be wearing or be in in order to fully maximize on the energy of that week, okay? And I don't usually do month ahead reads that often, but at this time it was called for and necessary because September is the month of the transformation. You're going to complete your transformation that you've already started going through over the summer. And by the fall equinox on, I believe it's September 22nd. I'm sorry, I'm recording this way in advance because it was just so urgent. But um, you're going to complete this transformation if you've been doing the self work that you've been guided towards doing. And committing to standing in your highest vibration as best as you can you are human in this lifetime we all are that are here right now so you're going to make human errors from time to time the objective is to be able to shift back into gear with ease or at least quickly so after we take a look at October because October is the new beginning. It's the 10th month. It's the number one um, when you add one to zero. And pretty much it is where you're going to be beginning this new energy that you transformed into. This new life even for some of you. You may find you're living somewhere else by October. You have a new circle of friends by October. Maybe you have a new relationship by October with someone you truly love, a divine mate. Maybe you'll find that you've left behind all that was familiar to you and you're starting your life. One more time. You're starting your life completely anew. So I want to prepare you guys because that's one of my jobs as a light worker, one of my services, 
is to help to guide other light workers along their journey. And at the same time, trust and believe, I am receiving guidance as well. So after we take a look at this, uh, the month coming, or depending on when you're watching this, you could already be in October. Um, after that, we're going to do a pick a pile where you're going to get specific messages to you and the collective that's drawn to that pile with you. So it would be really helpful if you put in the comments the pile you selected. And that way you and others who have similar piles can talk, can communicate. Hey, I chose that pile too. Where are you on your journey? Um, what do you do in service to humanity? Maybe we can collaborate because collaborations, I'm going to tell you now just with this channel message, collaborations are going to be very important in the next cycle of leveling up. You're not going to be able to do it all alone. And I know light workers, we're so accustomed to doing everything on our own because not many people are ready for the energy we have to offer. Not many people are ready to hear what we have to offer. And some people, even if we're not like really shining our light that bright as you should be, but say you're dimming it, you're still, still not being embraced in the way that the Most High intended. However, for some of us, that is your path. And that is what pushes you into the light and causes you to want to be a light for those that are on a similar journey. So, let's get into this general reading. Let's take a look at October. So week one, your first week in October, we have Malaika of Cups. Oh, my Queens of Cups, my motherly energies, my intuitive folk. Your intuition is going to be so on point the first week of October. Don't second guess what comes to you, what you feel. Your emotions are going to be overflowing you are going to be embracing, embracing those that are in your energy, those that are attracted to you, those that you literally have vibrationally called in. And I tell you, I, I even feel with this here, it gives me an energy of emotional elation. October is going to start off very, very happy and joy-filled for you. I don't know if it's going to be a financial boost that's coming in or just energetically, but whatever it is, it's overflowing. It's enough to share. So if you're feeling great, you're going to spread that feeling. If you're feeling prosperous, you're going to want to share that prosperity. If you're feeling filled with love, you're going to want to share that love. It's just, you're just going to feel like giving and nurturing not just others, but yourself. I see um, many of you uh, wanting to go to spas, go to locations in the world that offer you rest and relaxation, do things that make you feel emotionally good. All right. And what else do we have for the first week? Shamwell coming through. So wearing some light green, and that's interesting with this green energy here, will help you harness the energy of this first week, which literally says happiness, vibrancy, energy, and hope. So stay in the positive aspects of that this first week of October because the negative aspects can be feeling anxious, burdened, restless, and despair. But I don't feel that. Malaika was upright. And I feel that happiness, vibrancy, energy, and hope stay in that vibe. That's the vibe you're going to feel in. Something is going to come through that is going to make you feel very happy the first week of October. So, so far, we're off to a great start. <laughs> Oops. So, let's take a look at week two. Week two, we have the Eight of Swords coming through reversed. So, I'm telling you, week two, 
you're going to be freeing yourself from something that made you feel restricted or constricted or blocked, challenged, unable to progress and move forward, unable to elevate. By week two, you are going to realize that you were never trapped. You were never held down. You were never really restricted. The restrictions were placed by you. You felt like you couldn't move. You felt like you couldn't go any further. You felt like you were challenged. And by week two, you're going to realize it was all an illusion. That maybe others wanted you to feel that way so you couldn't progress. Maybe you accepted that. I'm just unable to elevate or progress or move forward in my goals. But with swords coming through, it was something that was in your mind, something that was mental. And with this reverse, you're seeing through this illusion at this point, and you're going to start to make some movement forward. And we have Archangel Michael coming through. So we too wear some blue that will help to really, really intensify the energy of being free. Um, I do feel with Archangel Michael coming through, you're also getting assistance from him in freeing yourself from something that felt like it was holding you back. And we have wise, honest, trustworthy, and observant. This is the energy you will be feeling or you should try to maintain during week two of October. Read, study, be open to learn, join workshops, take workshops, join, take, same thing. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Speak your truth. Be someone that people can trust. Observe others, but also observe you. Observe your actions, the things you do, okay? And make sure you're working from a place of wisdom. Because my light worker, you've had so many experiences now that at this point, you can apply them. Apply this knowledge, this knowing as wisdom. Let's take a look at week three. We have Shams, the sun coming through. Now the sun card does not really come in reverse. No matter which way the sun shows up, it's the sun. You're going to feel joy. You're going to feel that energy of new starts you see how they're planting something and with the sunlight it is able to grow so what i will tell you is believe in something that truly makes you happy and feels good to you because by week three it has the potential to grow into something amazing all it takes is a you believing and trusting. I'm also hearing for many of you by week three of October get out get out of the house whenever there's sunlight around get into the sun also um come together with friends and family week three will be a good time to uh connect to friends and family especially especially those that you want to begin a project with by week three of october potent energy to start a project that is going to take time to grow but also the faster you want it to grow, the more happiness and joy and uh, love you put into it. That's going to escalate. It's the speed that it manifests. Okay. And look at here. We have divine magic. Literally what that sun is bringing in and what you are going to get boosted with as you bring something into fruition okay it says wishes goals dreams accomplished so we are going to stay in the energy of trusting of knowing that what you put your heart and your mind and your soul into is coming into fruition i do feel with the sun for many of you just planting the seed is going to already take you take off it's like reaching out to somebody who can offer you a great opportunity to become prosperous or to become recognized. And just by reaching out, you've already turned the wheel of fortune in your favor. 
You're going to accomplish something week three that's going to be the answer to your wishes. It's going to be the completion of a goal or the beginning of a goal. And it's going to be the answer to your dreams, to all that you dreamed of. So don't let yourself fall into pessimism. Don't let yourself have any doubts and don't get greedy. Know that what's for you is yours already. You don't have to compete with anybody else. Just focus on what makes you happy and watch it bloom. Okay, let's take a look at week four, the end of the month. And you have the five of cups reversed. Now, when you see the five of cups, it usually speaks of focusing on, dwelling on past disappointments things that were out of your control, things that it's like pretty much the Five of Cups is like crying over spilled milk. Something that it happened, you clean it up, you keep it moving. But instead of doing that, you're dwelling on it, you're crying about it, you're not allowing yourself to grow past it. In the reverse, it means you are releasing these things. Things that used to hold your emotions in like a chokehold. Things that, memories I'm hearing, old memories from the past that held you in the energy of things that didn't go as you expected or go in the way that you desired. You're letting this go. And I want to pull one more card for the last week. I'm going to pull from the bottom something you don't see. Huh? The alchemist, the magician. You're realizing now that your energy, your vibration is attracting in your experiences. And if you continue to dwell in the past, things that didn't go the way you expected or you wanted, you're going to continue to call that in. Week four, with all of this great stuff that came in the, on week three, you have realized it's time to let go of that old shit. <laughs> it's time to let go of that. Because it's old doo-doo. That's exactly what it is. And what do you do when you doo-doo in the toilet? I hope you flush it. And you don't cry about it. You don't feel bad about it going down that drain. In fact, you're happy it's gone. And sometimes it leaves a little scent behind. And you're like, oof, I got to spray something in here. I got to burn some incense. I got to do something to clear out that stench. You don't want to hold on to doo-doo. So why hold on to doo-doo memories and doo-doo energy? You, by week three... I mean, I'm sorry, wow, but, why, but maybe it starts for you by week three. You move into the energy of the magician. And at least that is where most of you light workers will be going. And speaking of going, right under that is the Six of Swords. Leaving behind a time when things were dark and being guided towards greater things. Amazing. Amazing energy for the last week of... October. It's letting you know that you are manifesting. You're manifesting what you desire and there will be movement. You'll be moving. You might be traveling. You are leaving behind the past. You're leaving behind relationships and even jobs that did not serve you your full worth. And you're forgetting about the times you had to go through the suffering in these relationships, jobs, locations, you know, communities and you're calling in what it is you deserve and dear light worker the source source energy god allah Jah, yahweh yehovah however the 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 energy with many names and faces is guiding you guiding you towards that sun communication Accuracy, expression, intimacy, and honesty. And here you are with a whole new soul tribe. Here you are able to express yourself freely. Speak from your soul. Not from your mind only. From your soul. From your heart and spirit. Knowing that in expressing yourself as you truly are is an intimate connection to have with people so 
Don't let gossip get in the way. Don't hold back any truths in week four. No secrets, no lies. And don't go into hermit mode and be alone. In September, that's when you should have been taking care of that, right before the transition from fall into, uh, from summer into fall. That's where you pull your energy back for a while. Here, in October, you're meant to get out there. You're meant to connect with others, like-minded energies. And this is why it's important you put the pile you choose in the picker pile in the comments, because it is how you will find others in your soul tribe. For the third week, week of October, any bright colors would be great to wear that will help emphasize that sun energy in you. But mainly yellow would be amazing. But I'm seeing reds, yellows, purples, turquoise, bright greens, any color that's bright. Leave the pastels alone. Week three, bright colors, okay, will bring out divine magic in you and for you. And week four, that's when if you're into darker shades and colors, um, you can get back into that. I'm still seeing a lot of golds, mustardy gold colors, but deep indigo is also at play, maroons. Um, and for some of you, if you're not into dark colors, whites. The last week of October, wear white. A lot of whites. Mix them in there. And I'm also seeing for the last week of October, for many of you, wear something to cover your head. I'm seeing head dresses, head coverings. Even if you are not someone who wraps up your head, wear a hat. Put something to cover your crown or something that adorns your crown. You could wear a, literally a crown if you like. Um, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. A great, great, great October coming in or here already, depending on when you're watching this. I want to pass on these blessings that were given to me from a sister and I pass this on to you. May you all have luck, abundance and prosperity as you move forward through the rest of 2024. And I'll be right back with the Pick a Pile reading. See ya. Hey guys, welcome to this portion of today's session, the Pick a Card reading. And I'm excited because I have not seen what these top cards are and that's how you're going to select your deck. So I'm going to clear the space. We're going to take some deep breaths together and then I'm going to reveal the cards for all of us and yeah, we can go from there. So I have a little Palo Santo. this I like to clear the space in live time like literally uh, when I begin recording and I just finished talking with a friend about something that was disturbing me so I want to make sure the energy is good and right before I get into this um, you know, it was just something in, in regards to, you know, light workers, we're going to be misunderstood a lot. We know things, we see things, we feel things that others aren't going to always comprehend. And um, no matter how much you explain it, they still might not get it. And that's what one of those moments were that I was having. Um, I'm also somebody who is very very big on loyalty like I even have a rap song called loyalty and um I've had people be disloyal to me so much that I put a lot of pressure on those that I consider my sister friends or my sisters or family now based off of the history I've had with disloyalty in my past and it's something that I have to learn that everybody's idea of loyalty is not the same. 
not everybody is going to feel like your enemy is their enemy or somebody you have been harmed or hurt by is somebody that they don't want to associate with you know they might have a different <clears throat> idea of who the person is so that was something i was coming to grips with today that um i have to be open to accept other people's perceptions of people you know they haven't had the same experiences i've had with these people so how can they feel me you know where i'm coming from in regards to them but you know it will become it can be a little hurtful when you see people you embrace embracing those who have done things to you not so great and it's not to say you haven't gotten over what was done to you by the person it's more so of feeling safe in the friendships and stuff and the people you share those stories with and um, feeling not so safe when you see them embracing or hanging with the person that you literally told them about. So I'm learning. I'm a, I'm a work in progress, aren't we all? Let me take a little bit of that energy for you guys. And um, yeah, now I feel refreshed. Let's take a deep breath in together before we even flip these cards over in through your mouth. In fact, this time we're going to do it different. In through your nose and out through your mouth, okay? <clears throat> so let's inhale. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's try that again. <laughs> I was holding the bowl wrong. And let's go. Oh, feel that energy entering your body. And exhale through your mouth. Letting go of anything that is stuck and clogging up your flow of energy. Take another deep breath in through your nose. Taking in fresh air, new beginnings, new loves, new abundance, and exhale. Connecting to the earth, which is always abundant and ever giving. Take another deep breath in through your nose. Filling up with that light and loving energy of Mama Earth and your guides, ancestors, and the divine. Exhale. Feeling that loving energy as it travels all through your body, your cells, your veins, just everywhere. Take another deep breath in. Feel yourself glowing up as you connect to source energy and exhale through your mouth. Letting go of any stress, any worries, any fears. Let your body relax, release any tension. Yes, be present in the now. Because the now is a gift. So the present is a gift. <laughs> All right, so let's get to these pals. There are four pals. I meant to do three, but Spirit said no, four. And I'm literally starting this. It's around four something in the day. So, pal number one, we have this healing quartz, golden healing quartz on a crystal, heart shaped. And. After the storm, for pound number two, we have this orange calcite crystal. three we have this clear quartz it's like a shard of clear quartz crystal
and the perfection of your life. And for power four, we have this amethyst cluster. And release the dark wound, let love live. Take a good look at each of these piles and crystals. Really give yourself time to see which one is calling to you. I find it very interesting, uh, the crystals that are associated with the cards. None of this was planned and they all seem to coincide with the card. Um, so make your choice. You can pause if you have to and I'll be right back with pile number one. Hey, pal one, welcome to your reading. Um, you were drawn to After the Storm and this Golden Healing Quartz heart-shaped crystal. These are incorporated into your reading last. So I'm going to set this to the side and come back to it when it's time. So let's jump right in. I have the cards here uh, divvied out according to the questions that I want answered today. So the first one is, what kind of light worker are you? What gifts or spiritual tools? Ooh, why did I say that like that? Tools. <laughs> what gifts or spiritual tools are you activating right now? Okay. Exploration. Abundance. Wow. <laughs> Boundaries. I really feel that the gift or spiritual tool that you're activating at this time is an ability to trust your inner compass, to go where you've never gone before, do the things you've never done before, go places that people may feel like you can't reach, you should not go because they don't know where it's going to lead. And you have this gift of pushing these boundaries of, of creating bridges to unexplored territory. And by doing this, you create an abundance of blessings. It could be prosperity. It could be an abundance of love, of friendships, of connections to guides. But I really feel like your ability to go off and explore and learn more about things that may seem otherworldly to some is your key to abundance, to manifesting abundance. Hmm, interesting. All right, so let's see where you are on your journey as a light worker right now. Literally using the light workers oracle. Master healing. And see the cosmos here? I just feel like, in the book, I feel like you are learning at this time or being um, attracted to guides and teachers and places and things that can upgrade your knowledge of healing, self-healing, healing others. I do feel you are a starseed, my pal ones, and that a lot of your downloads come from the cosmos. I feel like you are tapping into ancient 
healing abilities and secrets that come from your time and experience either connecting to the astral plane or literally living on it at some point or some lifetime. And I felt that even here when I saw the moon and the stars and this other worldly place, it just gives me the energy that you are uh you are right now opening up to new ancient they're new to you right now but they're ancient ancient secrets and ways of healing on all levels isn't that interesting and your power has the golden healing quartz crystal and you got master healing it's just that's what you're where you're at right now and i feel like you're literally mastering healing yourself so that you can either inspire others to do the same or use this knowledge to help others heal. So let's see what will or could be a challenge for you as a light worker, if there are any. Wishful expectations. So there may be a need to acknowledge the smoke and mirrors in your life for what they are. So there could be a tendency of seeing people and things as you want them to appear to you and not knowing when someone just doesn't want the healing. And that can be heartbreaking. That can make you force yourself to keep pushing and trying to get a different reaction or outcome with something or someone to your own detriment. Just because you wish for something to go a certain way or someone to be a certain way. And uh, one of your challenges will be learning to accept that you cannot heal everyone and that there will always be some aspect of your life that will require healing because you're always going to be going through new experiences and learning new things. Make sure you can see that. All right. So who are you when you're standing in your full potential as a light worker? Tenderness, true love, compassion. You are a nurturer. You offer love unconditional. You feel people on a deeper level. And this can cause you some struggle and strife when you're not in your full potential. Because you'll want to help everyone. You'll wish for everyone to be able to heal in the way that you can or have. When you're in your true potential, you offer tenderness and compassion. No force, no judgment. Idyllic, idyllic times, the garden, paradise. Just feels like a wisdom. Having gone through something, and that's interesting with after the storm, feels like having, having gone through something, now seeing things transform, being able to take your experiences and make them your blessings. And even though they could have been hard times, it's like seeing your way out of the dark into a paradise like energy, transformation taking place. When you are in your full light worker energy, you represent like this garden of just a plenty of abundance of tr great transformation and change and beauty. And achievement, effort plus intention. When you are standing in your full light as a light worker, you are able to achieve anything you set your mind to. Anything you put intention, you set your intention on, your spirit guides. Make sure it comes in to fruition. 
we have four twice and nine twice. So four and nine may be numbers for you. And eight even divides into four. So four, 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 and nine, nine. You might want to pay attention to those numbers in the next few days. But this is your energy when in your full light work of power, you come off like a an indigo child. That's what I feel from you. A star seed slash indigo child who is very, very supported by spirit, who has been through a lot, but has grown from it. And from that can offer tenderness, tenderness and compassion to others. And that leads me to your first card, which describes the work you're meant to do in this lifetime, or just by being you. You are meant to help others learn to heal. Not to heal others, but to teach them how to heal themselves. And many having been hurt uh, by those they loved, friends, family, or lovers, and having been through a lot, you're meant to help people through the storm. Because you are already at a place where you've been through it. You're in the after the storm. Your work here is to inspire others to heal. And not only to inspire them to heal, but to also let them see if that's not necessarily what you do physically, just by being you, inspire them to keep the faith and realize that they too can see an end to stormy times in their life. Very deep role you play here because there's so much uh, need for mental health and wellness at this time. And I really feel that your place not only is to give emotional tenderness, but also to help people mentally address certain things that they've been trying to overlook. Wow. That's what I got for you, my power ones. I wish you so much luck and and love on your journey as a light worker. Um, give me a thumbs up if this resonated. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, I'm always welcoming new light workers to the channel. And remember to check the description for any workshops that I'm offering, ways to contact me to set up a personal session and all the other platforms where I'm offering free content and um, services to you all along your path. And on that note, I'm sending you so much light energy, <laughs> peace, blessings, and all that good stuff that comes from being a part of this light tribe. And I'll be back with Pal 2. See ya. Hey, pal two, you were drawn to She Feels, She Knows, and the Orange Calcite Crystal. These cards, I mean, I'm sorry, this card and this crystal are last. They are a part of the end of this session for you. So I'm going to put them to the side and we're going to jump right into the questions I have set up for your guides for you. So first, let's find out what kind of light worker are you? What gifts or spiritual tools are you activating? And by finding this out, it also lets you know the gifts and spiritual tools you are meant to use as a light worker. So my pal twos, you have sound. Wow. You may find that just by speaking, you are doing the work you're meant to be doing. Maybe by singing, maybe by doing poetry. There's something about the voice. Even for some of you, I was gonna say musicians, it could be music as well, but for most of you, it's going to be what comes out of your mouth and it's going to be coming to you through a deep, deep connection to the divine, to the throat chakra. Rest. One of your gifts 
your spiritual tools is rest. And I feel like this pal got that because you don't do it. You don't take it. When you rest, it recharges and reboots your energy. It revives your light. It gives your throat chakra a chance to rest so that you are able to express yourself better. And it gives your mind and also all of the different energies you deal with. I feel like many of you are family people, really connected to younger people as well. Um, and sometimes you might feel a guilt when you have time to vacation or to rest. But this is a gift to you when you get moments to rest. They literally help you to activate your light energy. Divine consciousness. Wow. Just being so connected to source energy. That's one of your gifts. You are like one. <laughs> I mean, we're all one with the divine, but some more so than others. And this card here, it speaks of an awakening. So it really, it's letting me know that this is happening for you right now. There's a need for you to just open up your mind and know that you're working with divine consciousness. Because when you do, you can open yourself to deep thoughts and meanings that cannot be described in normal language. It's expressed differently from the heart and the higher self. And I feel like through what you speak or what you sing or what you say poetically or, um, yeah, a lot to do with your voice. This is a really deep gift and a thing that, I don't want to say a thing, but a spiritual tool that you are awakening within. It's like literally saying that you are right now experiencing an awakening. And congratulations to you because you are raising your consciousness and energetically shifting right now. Your divine blueprint has been activated into a new state of awareness. And this can cause you to feel a little uh, sensitive at times, but that'll pass. It'll pass. You just have to adjust to this new vibration of being connected to the healing energy of the divine. Through you, miracles can occur. For you, miracles can occur. You just have to keep your mind positive. Wow. Wow. Meditation will really help you and, and help you to pull yourself back from gossip, from drama. Uh, it'll help you if you have any physical issues. This is a time to be really gentle with yourself and get that rest. Even journal. You can uh, even affirm, I am one with divine energy. I am one with divine energy. I am one with divine energy. And um, because my dear, you are. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> where are you on your journey as a light worker, my pal twos? Sheesh, we already see it. Divine talents. Your gifts are literally being activated right now. You have artistic, creative talents that you are like realizing how to use in a divine way. And that's because of this divine consciousness, this spiritual awakening that you're actually having right now. And I think you're starting to realize whatever you do creatively that involves your voice, that involves music, that even, I hear retreats, you may even host retreats at some point. That involves just being you for many of you. Just doing what you love. These gifts and talents you just were born with. That's where you are on your journey at this time. You are realizing that these gifts and talents are meant to serve in a higher level spiritual way. 
And maybe some of you didn't realize that you just like, I just do it because I love to do this. Well, now you know, it is a part of your journey as a light worker. Wow. All right, so this pile has been very interesting so far. What will or could be a challenge for you as a light worker? Spirit self. Wow. Be who you are as you are. Your challenge is going to be being you. Expressing yourself artistically, creatively, vocally, verbally, orally, um, divinely. And not letting anybody make you feel like who you are or who you are even awakening to becoming is wrong. This is your confirmation to be you, to stand in your highest power. You have the golden apple. You have a special gift. You have something no one else has. Tap into your spirit self, your higher self. Why is that doing that? Light adjustment again. But tap into this aspect of yourself and allow yourself to be who you are meant to be, which is a unique, spiritually attuned, divinely conscious, talented, creative being. Yeah. So let's see who you are when you're standing in your full potential as a light worker. Hidden knowledge, Akashic record, silent understanding. You're just going to be connected. You're just connected to the ancients. You're connected to the elements. You're connected to the animal spirit realm. You're connected to the cycles of the moon. There are things being activated in you that were always a part of you. That hidden knowledge, yeah. That ability to tap into the Akashic records, to tap into past lifetimes. That connection is unbreakable. And it's something that, some things you're just gonna understand. You're just gonna know. She feels she knows, that's deep, yeah. And this could be he feels he knows, okay? No gender. Brilliant beliefs, luminous life force, and personal power. You will have beliefs that many will not understand, but you will understand on a deeper level this world, this universe. Don't let it go to your head. Don't let it make you judge others for what they believe and where they stand, but do not let it take away your personal power of speaking your truth and standing in it. Your energy is going to light up the world, like illuminate things that people couldn't see or just chose not to see and accept and acknowledge. You're going to be a force to reckon with if you're not already. Hmm. Hostilities, conflict, unrest. That's interesting to have rest and unrest. When you are in your full light worker energy, if you're not already, you will find that you could be the target for the dark. A lot of those who are in the dark, who are in the shadow, and there's that moon energy with you again. They will not like you exposing, sending your, your light, shining your light on their shortcomings or, you know, yeah. So you could deal with conflicting energies of dark side. It's almost unlike seeing a war between the dark side and the side of light, and you're one of the warriors. 
So when you rest and you pull your energy back, you're out of, you're stepping out of the battle. Even when you host a retreat or go on a retreat, you are pulling yourself back to recharge, to reboot, so that you can emerge again ready to face any that want to oppose your beliefs, who want to oppose your truth, and who want you to dim the light of who you truly are. That takes a lot of strength. And that brings me to your first card. What you help others with by doing your work or just being you. You've gone through a lot of stuff that you might have felt like was not fair. You might still be going through stuff. But you have held on to your beliefs. You have stayed connected to the divine even when you didn't want to. And you're going to see, if you haven't already, what all of that has been for. What it's been about. It's been for the long term. And I feel what you're meant to help people with is creating a happiness and a joy and a resilience that is long term. Not just a quick fix, or you feel good today, or you're releasing things now, but tomorrow they may resurface. No, you are meant to give people a way to truly clear their energy. And orange calcite is a great crystal for boosting energy, for making you your sacral chakra activate, helping, helping you to stand in your truth, helping you to be true to who you are sexually, um, artistically, creatively. It's, a, it's really good for that. And um, you are meant to help others do that to embrace who they truly are, to express themselves creatively or however they're meant to. Um, maybe even help people learn to counsel others, to share their experiences as inspiration to others. You're also meant to help people shift their energy, to raise their vibration. Wow. And so that they can also see that the things they've gone through that light at the end of the tunnel that they kept seeing in front of them is within them and will soon come to the surface eventually. You just have to keep your faith and trust in the process. And that is what you are meant to also teach others. Wow powerful group of light workers I have here on my channel. I'm so happy that you guys are here. This is my reading for you, my pal twos. I hope this resonated for you. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm always welcoming new light workers uh, to join us. Mem remember to read the description. I don't know why I'm stuttering. Maybe this is my pal with the sound card here <laughs> in the throat chakra. But remember to check the description out to find out what workshops I have coming up at this time um, and uh, to book a personal reading with me as well as uh, joining me on my other platforms so we can continue to vibe and you can continue to get the guidance you need. And on that note, I'm sending you so much light and love, pal twos. Peace, blessings, and all the amazing things that come from being a part of this light tribe. And I'll be back with Pile 3. Later. Hey, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the perfection of your life. And this quartz, this shard of quartz crystal. And these two items are the closing words of your reading. So I'm going to set them to the side and we're going to jump right into the questions that I had set up for your guides today. So the first one is, what kind of light worker are you? What gifts or spiritual tools are you activating or have activated that are going to help you in your work as a light worker? So you have unconditional love. Oh. You are a nurturer. You are a mama or papa bear. You are able to make people feel comfortable, cared for, supported. 
this is a gift that you are currently activating and a tool for you as a light worker is to be able to love everyone without judgment. And maybe at times you found this difficult. Maybe at times you've lashed out at people because you did not agree with what they were doing or how they were doing it. Maybe you were helping people and you felt like I'm helping you and you're not behaving in the way that I would want, almost like a child. Reflect on these times and try to forgive yourself for those moments because in your heart, you are someone who is meant to be able to see through these things, to see to someone's inner child and know where they need help, nurturing and support and not abandonment. Um, I feel for some of you, if you've had been abandoned anyone in your life who has come to you for help, meaning you re withdrew your support, um, you turned your back on them for some of you completely. Others of you, uh, in order not to feel guilty, you kind of shunned them and kicked them to the curb, held some resentment towards them, let it go now. Know that you are activating this energy within you, unconditional love at this time. It's going to force you to reflect on those moments where you weren't reflecting this gift of yours. Because now it's time for it to be fully activated. It's time for you to begin to use it. Just by being you, you touch people in ways you don't realize. Or maybe now you are. Self-love. I really feel for this, pal. Your work as a light worker is meant to just shine your light, just to be you, to love on yourself, to forgive yourself, to work through your stuff. And other people will see that. And you will inspire and motivate others to do the same. And freedom. Yin and yang, balancing. Being able to balance your nurturing side and in love on who you are even when you're in your darker energy or more masculine energy and that's not to say that masculine energy is bad it's to say when you're in nurturing and when you're in more aggressive when you're in silent sit back meditative energy when you're in your more action oriented energy Learning to balance this and allowing them both to be free, to work through you freely. All right. Okay, so let's see. Where are you on your journey as a light worker? First ray of power. So you are at the beginning of your journey. And it does give me Mother Mary energy or uh, like more of that holding yourself, loving yourself, healing yourself or star ancestry. But I am hearing a more like Mother Mary-ish vibe. How come I was able to fit them all before? Okay, maybe it was like this. I thought I had all four going across the top in the other <laughs> part of the sessions. Maybe not. Um, yeah, because I want you to be able to see all of the cards. Okay. So I'm actually going to look in the book for you. I didn't have to do that for anyone else. And I don't really have to now. But I feel like there's something there you need to hear, my pal threes. The first ray of power is energy of conscious destruction. It can be used in a healthy way to eliminate the past and allow for a fresh start. This is where you are in your path as a light worker. The first ray also carries the frequency of leadership. It can assist you to stand in the truth of your light so others can find their way by it. What did I say that I felt like just by being you? Wow. It helps to strengthen your willpower so you can accomplish any task you choose. 
the Ascended Master El Moria, oh, that's who that is, Google, Google El Moria, brings you his particular blessing and encourages you to believe in your own strength and take the initiative on what matters most to you. Wow. So if you are confused about which path to take right now or whether to continue a certain relationship, course of action, or lifestyle choice, the first ray of power will clarify matters for you. Quartz crystal. This is just, these readings have been so synchronized. I mean, why am I shocked? All of my readings are. That's me, my issues. I, I got to learn to really embrace my gifts. <laughs> When it moves through your lives, whatever is holding us back will be removed, either through circumstances seemingly beyond our own control or by our own actions based on a sudden inner knowing. Things that once held great importance to you suddenly don't. Wow. And then purposes start to rise to the surface that perhaps you did not look at before but it's time to trust yourself as a leader with heart and awareness wow so at this time it's it's time to accept the loving gauntlet being thrown down by the universe and take your hands off of the controls of your life detach and be curious the universe will show you exactly what you need and remove what you do not. If something or someone is no longer a part of your life, it will be so. It'll be so that a more beautiful, truthful, and satisfying version of what you are surrendering can come into your world. Wow. Remember the universe loves you and wants only the best and most beautiful life experience for you. Trust it enough to let that happen now. That's where you are on your journey as a life worker. Deep. Wow, so what will or could be a challenge for you as a light worker? Eternal gatekeeper. Acknowledge, assert, and protect what is right for you it really seems like it's a repeat of what they're saying things that you need in your life coming in and being able to let go of and release the things that are not being able to protect what you hold dear to you and sacred and being able to assert yourself enough to acknowledge what is not right for you. Being the eternal gatekeeper for yourself. Not just letting everything into your energy that wants to be in it because you offer this unconditional loving vibe. But being able to balance your energies and love yourself enough to know what deserves to be in your energy and what needs to be out. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to put this here. I feel like this can slide up. <laughs> I don't know why this... You know what? My camera angle was different. That's why everything fit. There we go. As I said, I know I had everything fitting. Okay. There we go. Boom. Okay. So... Who are you when you're standing in your full potential as a light worker? Bright heart light. There's a lot with this light and love. Open connections. You are able to offer people love and nurturing and care. You're able to make connections with others who radiate the same loving light energy. I feel like when you're in your full potential, people will see you as someone who just radiates this light and this love. 
because you'll have cleared off everything that didn't deserve to be in your energy. Look, more horses. Horses are really uh, your guides at this time as far as animal spirits. Shamanic journey, purpose, attunement, and vision quest. Wow. I feel like there's some kind of healing journey you're going to go on or you need to be on um, or that you'll be attracted to um, if you're not already going through it. That's going to clarify for you your purpose, how you're meant to work your light. And I feel that, like I was saying before, in some way, shape or form, it's just by being you, by doing what you love, what activates this energy of love within you. Getting in attunement with yourself and your body. Maybe even withdrawing and going on vision quest where you spend time alone traveling or somewhere um, standing in your purpose. Yeah. Getting connected to herbs, I'm hearing as well, will be helpful for you as you are um, coming into your full potential as a light worker. I do feel for this pile, though, until you clear away certain things in your energy, you won't reach your full potential. Divine Feminine. Magnetic Receptive Power. Everything about this pile is Divine Feminine. But here, it's balanced. Like... Even here, the divine, the feminine energy is in front of the masculine. You are very much a divine feminine energy. Even if you are considered a man by gender, your divine feminine energy is your light power. Your ability to be nurturing and loving, it attracts in other people. It, it, it's, it's almost like a warmth and a welcoming energy for other people who maybe have felt cast aside or unloved, unaccepted. You might find you do, uh, uh, you attract many people who are black sheep, who um, even maybe if you're not one, you might be one, a member of the LGBTQ community. Those uh, people may be drawn to you because you offer this unconditional loving energy but you may also find you have issues when it comes to relationships. So watch that. With this eternal gatekeeper, you must keep that eternal gatekeeper alive for you. Not blocking out everything, because that could also become an issue. But loving yourself enough to know what's worthy and what is not. Who's worthy and who is not. <sighs> so lastly leads us to the final card and crystal what do you help others with by doing your work or just by being you just by being you my pal threes is how you help others by showing them love and compassion and warmth the perfection of your life speaks of looking at your life as if you are in the eye of the storm. So, and the storm that's happening around you is cleansing and clearing things out the way. So right now you might have felt like you were in a fog, but right now you're having a moment of clarity. Or you've been on this shamanic journey that is giving you moments of clarity with this quartz crystal here. You are meant to be clarity for others as they watch and see things you've gone through and see how you continue to elevate it makes things clear for them how you're able to still love unconditionally how you still love on yourself and through being doing this work on yourself and trusting the process and releasing what this storm is wiping away you gain clarity as well you're meant to inspire others with your life. That is the work you're meant to do here as a light worker. And also 
bring clarity to others who may not truly know what love is. Wow. What a mission, my pal threes. Whew. I hope this resonated with you. If it did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm always welcoming new light workers into the tribe. Leave a comment. Say which pal you chose so that other pal threes, because you guys need to come together. You need to let others, maybe from the other pals, because this pal could also be connected to pal one as well. Because pal one is after the storm. You guys are currently within it at this time. But you're also meant to show others that in this process, how you stay afloat, how you continue to love on yourself and love others. And eventually the storm will pass. So, yeah, put it out there. And maybe others who need this unconditional loving energy will be drawn to you. Well, remember to check my description, book yourself a personal read with me, um, and check out what workshops I may have coming up that could be beneficial to you at this time in honing your gifts and your light, and um, check out all the other platforms where I can be found. On that note, I'm sending you so much light and love, peace, blessings, and all that good stuff that comes from being a part of this light tribe. And I'll be back with Power Four. Later. Hey, Power Fours. Fours. Hey, Power Four. <laughs> Welcome to your reading. You were drawn with, you were drawn to release the dark wound, let love in, as well as this amethyst crystal. No. Aminus, oh my God. What is happening with me right now? It's like I'm feeling the leftover residue of Mercury Retro at this time. Didn't feel it the whole time it was going on. <sighs> Amethyst Cluster Crystal. <laughs> this card and this crystal is a part of your final question in this session. So I'm going to put it to the side. We're going to jump right into it. Okay, so what kind of light worker are you? What gifts or spiritual tools are you activating at this time that you're meant to use as a light worker? Change. I feel one of your tools and gifts is the ability to totally transform, to flow with the seasons, to flow with the times, to adjust, to be flexible, to follow the cycles of this planet, even of the moon, and to totally transform yourself when need be. Sometimes you give me the energy, light worker, that one of your main gifts, one of your major gifts and tools is the ability to go through something and not look like what you've been through. Have you ever said that before? I feel like this pile are, are people who can say, I don't look like what I've been through because you're able not only to be flexible and be open to change, but you're also able to go through the transformation yourself. Transformation. Are y'all playing with me today? <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. Ah! I'm sorry. This is me leveling up right now as an intuitive. Um, so y'all, if you've been with me for a minute, you're going to see me going through my realization and acceptance of my gifts. Yo. Transformation. <laughs> And I've done live reads, so y'all know I, I, this was not set up. This is one of your gifts. Maybe you're meant to help others completely transform or those who have gone through transformations um, of any kind, physical, mental, emotional. But that's a gift you have. This is one of your main tools to be able to rise and rise and rise again. You are the phoenix. This is, this is one of your spirit animals, by the way. You might want to get a picture or 
symbols. I also feel the sun is very much a healer for you. You have a strong connection to the sun. Try to be in the sun as much as you can, when you can. Tree of life. There's just something about you being very connected to the earth and to everything on this planet. Animals, people, nature. And with trees, you know, they go through their own transformation from a seedling all the way to a tree that is finally giving birth to leaves or flowers or then eventually even fruits. And there's just something about this. I feel um, a strong connection to your ancestry is one of your gifts. Connecting to the ancestors. And the seasons. Just really being able to accept changes and shifts and nothing holds you down you rise up you rise up from any setback time and time again my power fours very strong foundation hey number four it's the number of foundation of stability wow i'm i'm tempted to go to the book for tree of life i feel like there's affirmation or something here for you Wow, they opened me right up to the page change. But I already, I, I know I covered it. Okay, this tree of life. And then I went to transformation. <laughs> They're like literally show me all your cards. Oh, that's right in order. Transformation and then tree of life. Create strong foundations to support future goals and aspirations. So you're activating this at this time i'm also seeing family matters are of concern now um be open to solutions to achieve the outcomes you desire uh don't compromise too much to issues so that you are left feeling powerless like a branch on a tree growth will occur in an area that supports the core structure or it'll break and drop in order to maintain the overall strength of the tree itself. So you may need to drop a branch or two every now and then, which is also your gifts so that you can reach a certain resolution. You're also able to be patient. Okay. Connect to your roots. Get your feet into the dirt. Travel to where your ancestry is based. And here's your affirmation. I am unified through presence and action. My strength is supported with loving roots. I am unified through presence and action. My strength is supported with loving roots. This is your spiritual tools. These are your spiritual tools and gifts. Wow. So let's see where you are on your journey as a light worker now. Eternal now. It's like, is there a sound being emitted or air being blown? It's just a feeling of being present. And being very connected to divine energy. Why is this power making me want to look in the books? I've been channeling all this time. But this one here is making me like, no, take a look inside. So where you are right now as a light worker, within you is great strength and courage, power four. Okay. So it says, however, just because you can manage to keep going when you are drained or stressed, it doesn't mean you have to do so. You're encouraged by your higher guidance to request assistance in letting go of tension within your mind and body. You will gain energy through this release and perhaps even see things in a new and more optimistic light. Shifting into a more present, didn't I say being in the present? Relaxed and enjoyable state of being will help you overcome the past and successfully create your future. 
So some of your thoughts may have been trapped in the pain of the past. Or have they always been drifting towards the possibilities of the future? If you're doing either of these too much, you're pulling away from the present moment. And that's what I was feeling. There's a need to be in the present right now. So the universe believes that you're deserving of a spiritual gift. To accept a gift in whatever form it takes, you will need to be present. To have enough stillness of mind to recognize it. You'll need to have enough inner peace to accept it, to take it inside where it can nourish, inspire, and heal you. The form of this gift will be perfect for you and the way that it comes shall be perfect too. It is being orchestrated by divine timing now, which is why you need that patience that they're giving you, this special gift of being patient. But it will assist you to take the next step step on your soul journey successfully. So there's a need for stillness of mind and inner peace. But you can only reach that if you are present in the now. And the now is eternal because you're always in the now. <laughs> so that's where you are right now as a light worker. You are realizing that you cannot dwell in the past. You cannot dwell too far in the future. All, you, all of your focus should be on right now. And getting still and grounded in the now. Okay. Meditate. I'm hearing that strong for you, my powerful is Meditation. All right. So what challenges could arise for you as a light worker? Radical self-acceptance. So no challenge. You are perceived the way you perceive yourself. Well, that is a challenge. You have to accept who you are. Now, this shows a woman who had a part of her uh, her breast removed. And she's showing it proudly. And that's not to say this will happen to you, but it is figuratively, figuratively showing you that once you accept who you are, all of your flaws, all of the goods and the bads of you, well, not even bad, because there are no bads of you. All of what makes you who you are. When you are able to perceive it in a beautiful way and realize that everything you've gone through has made you and brought you to this place now and who you are in this moment, in this present, eternal now, then others will perceive you in the same light. So you may... Be challenged by accepting yourself as you are. Wounds, scars, and all. However, with radical acceptance here, it does show that this is something that can happen overnight for you. You can instantly have a moment where you just change. You just flip your energy. It could be happening right now. Will you go through this transformation because this is one of your spiritual tools and gifts you're meant to use as a light worker. And maybe some people will look at you and say, oh, yesterday you was this, now today you're that. Who gives a hell? Radically accept yourself for who you are and how you go through your process. You got to worry about nobody else. Hmm. Some of you, I feel, are meant to inspire by what you do and motivate others to want to do the same as a light worker. And then some of you are meant to be light workers that are hands on with folk. This pile, I feel you guys have a balance of both. So let me see who are you when you're standing in your full potential as a light worker? Setting boundaries, threshold protection, honor. Wow. Okay. So when you're standing in your full potential as a light worker, you are very, very highly protected. Okay. You won't let just anybody in. They will not be able to cross the threshold to be in your energy. It'll be an honor 
honestly to be in your energy and you might find people obsess over you to an extent they want to be in your energy um badly which is why you have to set boundaries okay you have balance stability standing firm like that tree and then i say stability for and powerful wow so when you're in your full potential as a light worker, you will feel so balanced. Things will seem so harmonious and flowing. You'll feel stable. You'll be standing firm in who you are, no matter what anyone else's thoughts are of it. You'll be in gratitude in your present, knowing that you can do the most work in the present <laughs> to project for the future based off of what you've done in the past or been through and notice the hands there's something with your hands either you're meant to do art or you're meant to heal through the hands also when you meditate or pray think about being in this position with your hands forward in front of you and you can also send light and love to other people they don't even have to be there by doing this and imagining visualizing feeling light energy coming from your hands so that's why i said this power feels like you can be a hands-on light worker and you can also be one that just does or just works from a distance or just does work on yourself that others are motivated to do the same clarity planning releasing illusion you will be very clear. Won't nobody be able to pull any wool over your eyes. I feel like you'll just know some things. You'll be able to see people, places. You'll be able to see very clearly what is for you, what is not for you. You will no longer hold on to illusions of what you want someone to be like, what you wish something could turn out to be. Everything will be crystal clear. Crystal clear. You might even find that your intuition gets a huge boost when you're in your full potential as a light worker. Wow. All right. That brings us to the last part. What you help others with by doing your work or just being you? Well, you help them release the dark wound and let love in because this is something you are currently doing or learning. With this quartz cluster coming in, quartz, why do I say quartz? Because of clarity. <laughs> with this amethyst cluster coming in, there is something with working with the divine at this time. Opening up that crown chakra, doing that prayer work, doing that meditative work, really connecting to the divine and to your source of life, the sun and your ancestry. And realizing that by releasing wounds, by releasing people and places and things that have caused you to dim your light, to doubt yourself, you in turn can let in love. Whoa, the card came all the way into my heart center. You can let in love that may have been blocked from coming in. Yeah. And that's not to say to cut off people to the point where they're detriment or cut off things like that. Look, she's putting it back or he's putting it back into the water so it can regain its life. So that it can re be reborn. And I do feel that you do your best work and healing work in groups, my powerful. You get a stability. You feel stronger amongst other like-minded energies. So you also help people to heal from wounds of the heart even if you feel like you may have been someone who used to cause them that was meant to be your experience so that you could know how that feels firsthand and the help that people could use to be able to transform and change themselves to not to not love themselves enough to know that they deserve better in the now but to also accept who they are and how they love and realize that there's somebody there for everyone. I do feel you are meant to help people heal wounds 
um, maybe as a hand on, hands on healer, maybe as a writer, maybe as an artist, um, a visual artist, I mean. Or you just work behind the scenes doing work, social work uh, of some kind that assists people in a way that allows them to release things that hurt them and to elevate themselves and be open to change and to know that they can transform and live again happily. And that's what I got for you, Powerfuls. What a deep read. What a deep session today. I hope all you light workers got what you needed out of this session. And listen to all the pals if you feel drawn to. Give me a thumbs up if this resonated. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new here. We are always welcoming in new light workers to the tribe. Remember to read the description. It'll tell you ways that you can uh, join my workshops, book a personal session, as well as meet me on my other platforms and vibe with us there too. Let's start this army of one million light workers. I'm sending you so much light and love on your journey. Peace, blessings, and all the amazing things that come from being a part of this light tribe. Until next time, bye. Thank you.